Okay, we know about the night when he know I need my seal, then you call me now, then my seal, then you call me. And now I let the beginning show tonight in Share Ora. First, I let the dedicate to show tonight, Lulin Nishmat Harav Hagon Adin Evan Yisal Steinzals, Zichron Sadik Libra Haru, Hadunai Tenechen of Ganeden. Began Nefesh Harav Gaon Yaakov Tzvi Ben Libar, Zichron Sadik Libra Haru, Hadunai Tenechen of Ganeden. Began Harav Aaron Vulcan, Zichron Sadik Libra Haru, Hadunai Tenechen of Ganeden. וגם הרב יהודה בן רבקה לאה, זיכרו צדיק לברכה רוח אדוני תנחנו בגן עדן, וגם נפש אבי ומורי ועטרת ראשי צבי הרש במרדכי רוח אדוני תנחנו בגן עדן, וגם נפש חמי ומורי ועטרת ראשי אליעזר בן ישעיהו דוד רוח אדוני תנחנו בגן עדן, וגם נפש חיים שמואל יעקב בן ארי הלב, וגם נפש דוד בנימין בן משה יעקב, וגם נפש שמעיה בן עדינה, וגם נפש יצחק בן עליזה, וגם נפש יצחק בן מרים. רוח אדוני תנחם בגן עדן, וגם נפש חתון חנה בת מזל מים, וגם נפש רות בת רחל, וגם נפש מאירה בת חיים, וגם נפש זינה בת שורה, וגם נפש חנה רחל בת בנימין יהודה, וגם נפש רחל בת לאה, וגם נפש רחל בת אסתר. רוח אדוני תנחם בגן עדן, להבדיל בין המתים לחיים רפואה שלמה ואליהו בן צרה, פה שמעון משה בן עדינה, פה יהושע בן משה, for Chaim Shnu Zalman Yehuda ben Hinda Yochevet, for Dr. Zev ben Nea, and for Moshe ben Bivai. El Narafan Alehem, El Narafan Alehem, El Narafan Alehem. Also for Rashima, for Malsu Bot Fortuna, for Esther Perabat Hana Devora, for Chava Miriam Bat Bunya Reza, and for Chia Miriam Bat Esther. El Narafan Alehem, El Narafan Alehem, El Narafan Alehem. And may the Hashem grant a quick and speedy uh, and a complete recovery to all the people who are affected by the coronavirus and any other medical illnesses. May they have a, uh, a recovery in the Zuchut of the Torah we're going to learn tonight. El Narafan Alehem, El Narafan Alehem, El Narafan Alehem. So we're on in the Share Ora. We're on page Kof Lamed Hey, and we're below the line, and we're on uh, uh, Kof Tzadi Tet. And here he's discussing Nidbak b'midah hazot. Of course, he's talking about the midah of the Malchut, the midah of the Shekhinah, that the person attaches to this midah. Sfirat ha-Malchut hiya shore shokol ha-Neshamot v'nikret Knesset Yisrael. The Sfirat of the Malchut is the root of all the Neshamot, all the Jewish souls, and this, this Sfirat is called Knesset Yisrael, the gathering of the Jewish people. ולכן הנשמות דבקות בה בבחינת בנים אתם לאדוני אלוהיכם. And therefore the נשמות, the souls of the Jewish people, are attached to, to the מלכות in the aspect of the פסוק that says בנים אתם. Sons are you for Hashem your God. כבן המאחז באביו, like a son who is holding on to his father. כמו שכתב בנפש חיים, לאט בנפש חיים רות רב חיים בבלוז'י נשאר א' פרק ה' ונשמת החיים של הכיסא. That the Nishmat Chayim of, of the Kise, who sold Shoresh Al Yon shall Klalot Neshamot Yisrael Yacha. This is the this root of all of the souls of the Jewish people. Shehu Yoter Gavoa O Meod Nala Gamea Kise. And that is greater than the, all and in elevation than the Kise. The Katav Od, and it's also written in Shar Bet, Perak Yud Zayin, Vizeu Ikar Kavanatam Zichon Al Mirvacha, and this is their essential uh, understanding made of blessed memory. In Breshit Rabbah, Parasha Zayin, Ot He, Shedashu Bepasuk Totse Ares Nefesh Chaya, that the land should give forth a nefesh, a soul, a living soul, afilu nafsho shel adam harishon, afilu nafsho shel mashiach, which even though this pasuk is called, uh, talking about the birth of the animals, the, the uh, nefesh chaya, here also says not just that, but it's also talking about nafsho shel adam, the soul of man, and the soul of mashiach. Ki zot ha-bechina hi sod Knesset Yisrael Eretz HaChaim HaElyona. Because this bechina is the secret of Knesset Yisrael, which is Eretz HaChaim HaElyona, which we discussed last week, Eretz HaChaim is basically discussing about the uh, about the Malchut. Kumo Shabir Vesefer Sharei Kedusha, and like it was explained in the book Sharei Kedusha by Rabbi Gikatilia in Chelek Gimel Sharei, or Adam HaElyon Hanikra Eses Sfirot, the emanation, the light of Adam HaElyon is called Eses Sfirot, the Tenth Sfirot, Mitlabesh Bazeha Or Hanikra Or Mechza Vanech Shamot. And it's dressed in this ore that's called the ore of the place of the souls. And all of the souls of those the lower beings are, are, are included there. 
when they come down to this world, to dress up with bodies, with uh, with uh, with physical bodies, many They leave their souls remaining attached to their sources from the place they were hewn. And only the branches of those roots are the ones that come down into this world. By way of hit uh, of, which means emanation or development, uh, and and they dress up with all kinds of different physical bodies in this world. Resh, al tarata evarim by way of the purity of the limbs. Like our rabbi explained in the Hakdama of this book, and this is his language. Because Hashem wanted to give us merit, He created inside a human being all different types of limbs. Some of them were hidden and some of them were revealed. Similarly to how the Merkava, the Maaseh Merkava, the chariot of Hashem, is also designed. And if a person has the merit to be able to purify one of the limbs of his limbs, this limb that has been purified will be like a will be like a throne for that aspect of that upper aspect in the in the uh, in the upper worlds in the Merkava that's called by that name, Ketzad. How does this work? A person, give an example, is careful with his eyes see, doesn't allow his eyes to see things that are inappropriate. He doesn't look and he doesn't stare in any type of nakedness. And not anything else that is inappropriate to be looking at. Next page, Koflam Evav. But he only allows his eyes to see See things that are holiness, uh, holy, holy aspects, and service to Hashem. And then what happens is his eye becomes a kise, becomes a throne for that aspect in the Merkava that's called Ayin. And similarly, the hand and the legs and all the other limbs as well. And when a person becomes a Merkava, becomes a, a, a chariot for the Shechina, he basically has the merit to be attached to the Shekhinah after his death, and he's attached to the everlasting life and the life in the world to come. Okay, Resh Aleph. Nikra Chai Gam Achare Moto. He's called alive even after the person passes away. Kol Nefesh Shamayim Betor Batorah Sheshorish Nishmato Shemidubak Menech Az Betzach Chayim Anitzchiim. Every person who has faith and believes in the Torah, that the source of his soul that is attached and is uh, is grabbing hold of the Etzach Chayim, the Tree of Life that is forever, with the resurrection of the dead that will happen in the, when God's will in the future, Yered Or HaNeshama Lemata, the soul, the or, the light of the Neshama will come down, and will shine within his body, and that will happen, he's explaining how the Techia happens, so the or of the Neshama comes down, and basically, emanates and shines into the leftover part of the body and connects to all of the roots of the body and it gets built up, the body gets built up and it wakes up in the Tichiyah. But this is only people who are Chayim because it's Sadiqim Afila B'mitatam Nikraim Chayim but the Rishayim Afila B'chayihem Nikraim Metim so Kal V'chomer of course when they're dead so with the Rishayim it says here that didn't make Teshuvah they're called dead, not only called dead when they're dead, but they're all called dead when they're alive. And what this means is the nefesh of the rasha is disconnected from its root. 
ki davar Hashem baza, because he basically uh, showed disgrace to the words of Hashem. Ve'et mitzvah to hefar, and the mitzvot he canceled, he didn't follow them. He karet ti karet la'olam hazeh. He will be certainly cut off for this world, u'olam haba. That's the double lashon the Gemara learns out of. He karet ti karet. He karet is olam hazeh. Ti karet is olam haba, which means the person gets completely cut off. Hu nichrat me'akadosh baruch hu me'atorah, and he's cut off completely from Hashem, chas v'shalom, and from the Torah, legamre, completely. Then ma'ashi ya'ir v'kayi and therefore there's nothing that is going to allow his body to wake up in the resurrection of the dead and what the fact that he's alive in this world which means he's a Rasha but he's alive in this world it's basically like when you cut off the, the tail of a, of a lizard it still is moving it's almost even though the, the tail has been separated from the, the head of the lizard the tail is still moving which means it's still alive but it's really not alive the tail is dead it's been disconnected from the lizard the tail will die that's the whole concept Concept of the Rishayim in this world. Since they have been cut off, they have been cut off from their shorish, from the root, from the head. So therefore, their body is like this lizard's tail that's still moving after it gets separated. Like the Maharal explained in Chidushe Agadot Rosh Hashanah Tet Zayin Aleph, Bezeloshon, and this is what he said. The evil ones, even when they're alive, they're called dead. That's Hadikim Afilu B'mitatam Nikruchaim. And the righteous, even after they've passed away, even if they've died, they're called alive. L'fichach Rishayim Af B'chayehem Nikruchaim Etim. And therefore we see that Rishayim, even in their life, they're called dead. V'afim Yesh Lahem Chayim. Even if they have what appears to be life, En Chayotam Ba Mimikor Chayim. Their life doesn't come from the source of life. It doesn't come from... From the source, which means it's like the lizard's tail that's just moving. What is this like? Like a pit that has water. But the boar has no source. We learned this previously in the Sha'are Oram when he was talking about this before. There's a difference between a ma'ayan and a boar. A boar is a collection of water, but it's not ma'im chayim because there's nothing replacing the water in the boar or whatever is there is there. Hare zelo nikra chayim. So this water that's in the boar is not called chayim. It's not called alive, as we see in the parentheses. Shamayim bebor ki umam raklazman because the ma'im, the water that's inside the boar, is only going to be there for a period of time. The and all the life of the Rishayim is life that is temporary. With their animal soul that's in the body. And all of their life in, that, in this world is like the tail of the lizard that was cut off and it's still moving, it's still shaking after it's been separated. But the Tzadikim, whose life is actually the source of their life, of course, is God. Even after they've passed away, which means their body has, has died, they're still considered to be alive. What is this like? Like it's like a, a ma'ayan, like a, like, a, like a, a geyser, like a fountain that has a source of water that's far away, but it continues to, sh- uh, sh- to, to give over water. And something comes and separates the, the ma'ayan from the source. And this is similar to the tzaddikim that have connection, that have attachment to Hashem Yitbarach. That there, it's still the Mokor Chaim. So even though there's a separation, so the water in the bar is not feeling anymore, the water is still coming from the source, going to the area of separation. This is the concept of the Neshama, of the person who passed away, that Tzadik, it's still alive because it's still attached to the source. Even though the body is dead, the Neshama is still alive. Pumpaket is the exact opposite with the Rasha. The Rasha, his Neshama is, is, is separated. His Neshama Nefesh is separated because of the karet. So the only thing that his body is moving, but it's really disconnected from the source, and therefore it's like it's dead. Because nevertheless, in this last example, he's still attached to the makor the source of the life.
רק כי לפי שעה הטבע היה סוטה מהמקור. But based on the nature, because his body died, this, as if the, 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 there's a separation from the source. ונעשה חציצה בין הצדיק ובין המקור, וזהו לפי שעה. And basically there's a separation between the tzaddik and the, uh, the body of the tzaddik and the, uh, and the makor. But that's only temporary. Until God removes the chatzitza, which is the teva, which is the nature. And then there's resurrection of the dead. Okay, resh bet. Ketiv chai v'kari chayil. It's written chai, the pasuk wrote, wrote, wrote chai. But it's written, it's read as Chayil. Ita b'gemara masechet brachot af yudchet. It says in the gemara masechet brachot, Atu kule alma b'nei mate ninhu, All the members of this world are going to die. Ela ben ishchai afil she'afilo b'mitat ho karuchai. But when it says ben ishchai, which is the which is one of the terms used for the uh, for the Mashiach in pas in Yishaya, well, what does it mean ben ishchai she'afilo b'mitat ho? Even after he dies, he's called alive. Of course, this is not like the Christians say. This is more what we're saying. The fact that his soul is still alive, awaiting for the resurrection of the dead, um, that is the concept of all the tzaddikim. Uh, the Christians, of course, only apply this to the Mashiach, which is uh, which is incorrect. Targim Targim I'm sorry, that's a mistake. That's a taut over there. It's supposed to be Ben Ishchai. Um, and the Targum Yonatan explained Ben Ishchai Bar Gavar Dechayel Chataim, a person that is strong of chayil, of chataim, sin, meaning what? She'achai hu tzadik yesod olam, that the chai, the person who's alive, is the tzadik yesod olam, the tzadik, which is the yesod, the foundation of the world, she'bazeh zochel eretz ha'chaim, and through this he has merit to the eretz ha'chaim, the way of life, the 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 the, the, the land of life, ba chayi olam ba. this is the resurrection, the, the, and the, the world to come. The kol zem and romez b'ktivi, b'ktiv b'ubikri, and all this is hinted to in the k'tiv and the kri of the pasuk, ha-katuv, ha-kativ hu ha-davar kefi shua ba-shoresh. The k'tiv is like it is in the shoresh, and that's called chai. The kri hu ech shemit gale klape chutz. And the kri, which is chayil, is how it's revealed on the outside. V'lachen ha-kativ, and therefore what's written is chai, meramez al ha-yesod shu ha-shoresh ha-pnimi shel ha-chaim. It's hinting to the yesod, which is the root, of the inner root of the chaim, be'eretz ha-chaim, which of course is the root of the malchut, shihia malchut hanikret eshet chayil. That's the malchut, and the malchut is called eshet chayil. Kedita ba-zohar, like it's explained in the Zohar, in parashat shmini daf mem bet amud bet, v'zela shono. Eshet chayil mi imtza, this is of course from Mishlei, Eshet chayil, a woman of valor who can find, da Knesset Yisrael. This is Knesset Yisrael, the, as we said, all the neshamot of the Jewish people. Di'ihi eshet chayil kema de amran. This is really the eshet chayil like we've said. And the Ga'um of Vilna wrote in his Perush on Mishlei, chapter 31, verse number 29, Rabot banot asu chayil, many daughters did chayil, did chayil, uma shenechelak lechayil lefi shirabu ma'alotea biyud chet ma'alot. And why is it called chayil, which is a chet, and a yud lamed separating, meaning what? Chay lamed. Lefi shirabu ma'alotea, because she has many different levels, biyud chet ma'alot, with... 18 different levels. Ad kan l'shono. Ayem b'nefesh chayim. Look in the nefesh chayim. Shara dalet perak kaf alef. She'amale Torah b'dvekut kol yimei chayim zochim l'or aganuz. That those who toil in the Torah with attachment, like we're learning in the book of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Talmud SS Firot, those who attach themselves in the Torah and extract the ore that's inside the Torah, kol yimei chayim, all their lives, zochim l'or aganuz. They have merit to the or aganuz, which is the ore that is hidden within the Torah. And they're called alive even after they pass from the world. And their souls are underneath the Kisea Kavod, which of course is the Bina. And this is specific the type of life that a person achieves from the power of the Torah. Because when they attach, they attach themselves to the Torah all of their lives. Like the Ramban explained in Parshat Vayichi. And what is this like? This is like the, everyone in the world is instead about Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, that for many years after his, he died, he would come down every single Friday night 
night, and he would make Kiddush for his wife, even though he had already been dead and buried, but he would make Kiddush for his wife every single Friday night, that they can come down to this world, Kamor Ribi, like Ribi Yudah Anasi, Shabbat Betol Asot Kiddush, that he came to his house every single Friday night, I think it was for 18 years, and he made Kiddush, Ayen Sham Barucha. Look there in more detail. Okay, Resh Gimel, we're on the next page, which is page Kof Lamed Zayin. Chaim Kulechem Hayom. This is Ve'atem Advei Kem Ba'adonai Lechem Chaim Kulechem Hayom. Ayedek Kiyum Torah Mitzvot Adam Nitbach Beshechina Vezochem Mimena Lechaim Nitzchim. So by way uh, of, of the fulfilling the Torah, following the Torah, a person attaches himself to the Shechina, and he has merit from her for life that is everlasting. Like it explained in the book of Derech Hashem, which of course is the Ramchal, Perak Aleph Chelek Bet, the fact that Hashem is the ultimate Tov, the perfect Tov, the true Tov, when, human, when people attach themselves to Hashem, then they get benefit from the tov, the true tov that is there. Ubara vesider emtsaim shehema Torah, and God created all different types of mill grounds, which is the Torah and the mitzvot. Shal yada yuchal adam leedabek baborei olam bechubakol, and this is how a person attaches himself to Hashem through the studying of the Torah and through the performance of the mitzvot. Ve'acharek kinyan ha'shlemut, and after a person acquires shlemut, acquires perfection, nimtza adam mitbak beho veholech bo vezochel lahanot betu mitovo yitbarach. When the person acquires that Shlemut, then he's attached to Hashem, and he goes with the Shekhinah, he goes with Hashem, and he, with the Torah and the Mitzvot, of course, and he has benefit and pleasure from the goodness of Hashem. And this Dvekut that we see is precisely what is pleasure that he gets from attaching himself, and through that he has benefit from the shine of the Shekhinah. This is the shine of the Kedushah of Hashem. That shines forward from the Sefirot, to the Eretz HaChaim, which of course is the Malchut. Like the Ramchal explained in the book of Klal the essential part of the Svirot, which is the 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 development or the spreading out of holiness and ziv and shine or emanation, elyon exalted emanation from him. Because he is the source that is that is hidden and is un un understandable, not understandable by human beings at all. Of course, his essence. The ele kulam hem ziv kedushato, and all of these are the ziv of the shine of the kedushato, which means everything, all the sfirot are the shine from his kedusha. Asul la erech hatachtonim. They they were basically put there. I guess they weren't created. That's why this language is not miduyak. The sfirot. Sfirot were always there, but they were revealed. They were given the power of revelation. That was the chidush of the sfirot, not their creation, because they're godly, so they're not created. But they were allowed to be seen. They were allowed to be perceived by human beings, and they were. They were that perception of the sfirot was for the purposes of the tachtonim of the lower world, of the lower people, of the creatures of the world, the the, the human beings, and specifically the Jewish people. Shianubo that they will get pleasure from it. Al derech veneanim eziva shechina through the way of ne. Pleasure from the Ziva Shechina. Just like the Shechina, the Eretz Chaim, gives abundance and influence to the material world, et kol hachayim, all of the life, all of the living in the material world, ken tashpia chayim l'olamba. Similarly, the same thing will give hashpa'a, will give influence and abundance to the life in the world to come. Of course, this is talking about the world of the techiyah. Kumo shibi'er hafetz chayim, let the hafetz chayim explain in the beginning of the Mishnah Bura, ba'olam haba she'aneshama hinitzchit, in the world to come, when the soul is nitzchit, is ever Everlasting, tzarich sheyem mezona inyan dak ruchani nitzchi. The mazon of the of the neshama is basically the sustenance of the neshama is dak is very very thin, but it's a spiritual sustenance and an everlasting sustenance. V'lachen akadosh baruch hu berov berov chemlato, and therefore Hashem with his with his tremendous mercy, natan lano et Torah kedusha sheyin nitzchi. He gave us the holy Torah, which is everlasting.
testing. And through the fulfilling of the Torah, through the following of the Torah and the Halakha, this the Torah shines or of Hashem, the or of Hashem on our souls. And from that very or we get the ta'anug, the ultimate pleasure, which is the spiritual pleasure. Because the Torah is for the nefesh, like the etzah chayim is in the gan eden. When a person would eat from the tree of life, he would live a life of everlastingness. And this is what's written in the Torah. Look, I have given before you the life and I have given you the death. Or the Tov and the Ra, right? It wants to say specifically, Chaim, life, true life. Through the fulfillment of the Torah, there is or light that comes to the nefesh, and that will allow that nefesh to live forever through that or. That the Torah is considered our life and the long, the length of our days. Resh Dalin. Is it possible for a person to attach himself to the Shekhinah? We have a mitzvah of Vekut. Rashi says, how do you attach yourself to the Shekhinah? How do you attach yourself to Hashem? Hashem is Esh Ochela, is fire. So he says, that, that if I remember correctly over there, so you attach yourself to the Chachamim. Let's see what he says over here. Ita Begmara. It says in the Gemara, Masechet Ketubot, Dav Kof Yud Alaf Amud Bet, Ve'atem Atveikim Ba'adonai Lochem Ha'im Kulechem Ha'yom. And those of you who are attaching yourself to Hashem today are alive. Meaning what? V'chi Efshar Li Dabukela B'Shekhinah. Is it possible for a person to attach himself to the Shekhinah? Isn't it written that uh, that God has the, uh, the 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 it's like a consuming fire? So how do you attach yourself to fire? Whoever marries off his daughter to a tamid chacham, they'll say prakmati ala tamidei chachamim, and he does business specifically with tamidei chachamim. Ve'amene tamidei chachamim minichasav, and a person who allows tamidei chachamim to get benefit from his properties and from his uh, acquisitions, ma'ale alav akatuv kilo mitabek b'shechina. It counts as if he's attaching to the shechina by attaching to the tamidei chachamim. Ve'olech ma'aver rabenu, and our rabbi goes and explains shekol. All of this is in our world. When a person is made from a material material aspect, the body is made of material. And inside the person is still the zohama, the filth of the yetzahara. And he still cannot achieve that level of dvekut that is perfect, that perfect of attachment. Then the fire, of course, is Esh Ochela, a consuming fire. She Mechale Koldavaru Machzira Tolo Shosho. What is the purpose of the fire? What it does is it destroys everything and returns it back to its roots. Ava Baulama Sachar Sham Haesh Eno Mechale. But in the world of reward, of course, in the world of Olam Abba, there the fire does not consume, like the Sneha Boer Ba'esh Ve'asneh Nen Ukal. And the Esh over there does not consume the physicality. Ol Hefech, Notenet Chaim Adam, And it's the opposite. It actually gives life to the person. Umit Chaberet El Nishmato V'nyeh Echad Ita. And it attaches to his Neshama and they become like one. Kumo Shibier HaRav Yitzhak Aizik Chaver Be'or HaTorah, in the book Or HaTorah, Sh'yesh Shnei Mineh Esh. There are two different types of fire. One type of fire gives life and sustenance. Like the warmth, the temperature of a person, the heat of a person that allows the body to live. And the other one is the fire of the world. The fire in the world, the physical fire, which of course causes there to be the loss of the life. One is the fire, one is the warmth of the Kiddushah, does not destroy. It does not only destroy the fact that the person is able to maintain a body temperature, allows his body to live. And this is precisely what Moshe Rabbeinu saw when he saw the sne, the burning sneh. When the sneh was burning, what is not was not being consumed. 
Tosafot, like it's written in the Tosafot in Masechet Chagiga and Daf Kaf Zayin and Mud Aleph, Shemizbeach Hayah Ovi Dinar, that the Mizbeach was the thickness of a dinar. The Hayah Moshe Tmiya Al Zeh Shelo Yisaref Aetz, and Moshe Rabbeinu was shocked. How is it possible that the fire would not be consumed? The Amalu Am Makom, and Hashem said to him. Kach darche darchai. This is the way. This is my way. But esh amala esh ochela esh. In the esh of above, fire consumes fire. The eno mechale, and it doesn't. It doesn't consume. It doesn't destroy. Midichtiv asne enenu kal. That's why it's written asne enenu kal. The esh shel a shechina titen la adam chaim laolam, and therefore the esh of the shechina gives life to the person in this world. The etzem a chaim shel a dvekim bo yitbarach, and this is the true aspect of life of the those who attach themselves to the Shekhinah. Okay, next page. Kof Lamed Chet. We're on Reish He, which is below the line. Ve'atem ad'vekim ba'adonai Elohechem. And you who attach yourself to Hashem. Inyan ha'dvekut bo, the idea of the dvekut bo, yitbarach na'aseh, ke'shemitchaberet ha'neshama betaryag k'lakea im taryag orot ha'shekhinah. So what is the essential dvekut? When the 613 chalakim, the 613 aspects of the neshama, attach themselves to the 613 orot, lights of the shekhinah, k'mo she'or mitchaber l'ner, like the fire attaches to the candle. K'mo she'bi'er b'da'at vunot, like it was explained in da'at vunot of the Ramchal, chelik bet ot yud bet. Ma she'nit ba'er b'divir ha'nevi'im, what's explained in the, way, in the words of the prophets in Nishaya, chapter 18, verse number 14, as tit anag al Hashem, then you will have pleasure on Hashem. And in Tehillim, chapter 37, verse number 4, Vit aneg al Hashem, and you will have pleasure on Hashem. Kichol inyanea neshama, all the aspects of the soul, hu liyot davka el sibata, the whole purpose of the soul is to attach herself to her source, to her cause. Umaseget ora, and to achieve and to appreciate the light from the source. And because this type of attachment is everlasting, who hachaim hanitzchim, this is the true life, the life of everlasting. Kvar uchvar al inyan zeneemar, and on this it already says in in Devarim chapter four, verse number four. Ve'atem advekim ba'adunai noachem chaim kolechem hayom ki eno nikra chai, because he's not called alive. Ella hadavek el sibato. The only person that's truly alive is a person who's attaching himself to his cause. And then the ultimate purpose of the dvekut is that all the different aspects of the person's neshama should be attaching themselves to their roots. And this is like the 613 limbs. Similarly, there's the 613 limbs of the neshama, shall we say. And by attaching oneself to those limbs, you're attaching yourself to the 613 in the shamayim. And that's why specifically there are 613 mitzvot and no more. Will be er sham od, and also explained there in more detail od chet, which of course is in the da'at funot. Shekol mash yes ba neshama hu cham besfirot. Whatever is in the neshama is already previously prepared in the sfirot. Vehem targag chalakim, and there are 613 aspects. Ulumat kol achalakim ha'ela, and vis-a-vis all of these portions, all of these aspects, nitnu targag mitzvot. There are 613 mitzvot given. Keneged chalke adam, vis-a-vis the the different parts of the person, the different limbs of the person. Vekasher yaseh adam ha mitzvot, and when a person performs the mitzvot, he ne yimshach or elach. He draws light to all the different aspects of his 613 limbs. He draws first sustenance to the neshama, which is the root of the 613 limbs, and that's how the 613 limbs are alive, through getting chiyut, living force, from the makor to the neshama and then to the person's body. The azhu davuk besibato, and then the person is attached to his cause. Umuchan lekabel min hatariyag orosh sheyesh besfirot, and he's prepared to receive from the 613 emanations that are in the sfirot. Bechol mitzvah shenechzar mimenu, and any mitzvah that God forbid the person is missing, hu chisaron bedvekut. This is an aspect of missing an attachment, which means there's 613 different ways to attach himself to 
Hashem, and if he's missing any one of the mitzvah, he's missing one of those attachments. And one of the things, that one of the translations in the Zohar of a mitzvah is actually an attachment, a, 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 a hook. And then because of that, since he's missing that, he's not able to properly get the life to that very limb. He may have the other ones, but this one is not getting its proper sustenance and nourishment. Look there in more detail. Okay, continue on. Resh Vav, Vesod Surat Taharat Evarim. In the secret of the, uh, basically the Taharat, the purity of the limbs. Kol mitzvah mitariah mitzvah sheoseh ha'adam be'achad mitariah gedarav. All of the 613 mitzvot that a person does with one of his 613 limbs, na'aseh levush le'ever. It becomes a levush, it becomes a clothing for that ever. O legid ha'mechaven negda. Or to the limb that is specifically vis-a-vis that mitzvah. And then his body is prepared to properly attach itself to the 613 lights of the Shekhinah. Like it's written in the book of Rabbi Moshe Kodavero, Pardes Rimonim, Shar Chet Paragimel, Shemea Keter Yesh Tarach Orot Kiminyan Keter. That from the Keter, from the crown, or from the highest Fira, there are 620 lights. Tarach is 620. Kiminyan Keter, like the, the, the gematria of the word Keter. Vehem Shorosh Tayag Mitzvot Vesheve Mitzvot Rabbana Olim Tarach. And this is basically the 613 mitzvot that are from the Torah, and the seven mitzvot midi Rabbanan, altogether 613 plus 7 equals 620, Tarach, which is Keter. And the 613 orot emanations that are in the Sfirot, they shine to the Sfirah of the Malchut. And from the Malchut, then the Shekhinah shines forward and gives sustenance to the 613 worlds. When a person fulfills the mitzvot, that their root is in the 613 worlds, he clothes himself with 613 different emanations. And through these emanations, he attaches himself to the creator of the world. And the Ramchal explained this in more detail in his perush, uh, in his perush on Pirkei Avot, which is called Ruach Hayim, Perak Dalet Tet Zayin, HaSachar Hu Lihitaneg Al Hashem. The true reward is for a person to have pleasure on Hashem. Benoam Ziva Shechina, through the pleasure of the shine of the Shechina. The Arter Gadol Mit Karev Yoter, and a person, the greater the person is, the closer they get. Ul Mechitzato Lifnim Mechitzat Chavero, and his portion is closer, or his mechitza, his limit is further closer than his friend. The mitzvot hem taryag levushim, and the mitzvot are basically 613 different types of clothing. Levusha kol ever begid. Each one is a different type of um, clothing for the various uh, limbs and sinews. Meharemach from the six, from the 248 evarim, veshes agidim, and 365 uh, sinews, altogether that equals 613. Ukeshim melubeshet kula and when she is dressed in all of these 613, she's able to get closer to her, to her, uh, to her, uh, to her, uh, the one who created uh, the world, and she gets pleasure, the Neshama gets pleasure in Hashem. Therefore, a person basically puts on this clothing, which is the mitzvot, so that he can enter and come inside to receive the sachar, to receive the reward. This is what it says in Yoshua, in Zechariah, Peregimel, Pasugimel, Hakohen Hagadol, Yoshua Hakohen Hagadol. The, the high priest, that he was wearing filthy clothing, and he's standing before the, the angel, what does this mean to say? Because he was wearing those filthy clothing, that's why he was standing before the malach and not standing before the Shekhinah, because he was wearing those filthy clothing, he wasn't able to get to the Shekhinah, he was only able to stand before the malach. 
Malach, and the Malach prevented him from going any closer. And then afterwards, when he put on proper clothing, then the Malach said to him, And then I give, will give you pathways. What pathways? Pathways to get to the Shekhinah, lemala, lemala, velo yakvucha, to go up and up, and nothing will prevent you. No malak will prevent you from going up into the higher worlds. Ayem ba'arichup and nefesh shachaim. And look at this in more detail in the nefesh shachaim of Charav Chaim Veloz in Shar Aleph Perak Vav. Okay, Resh Zayim, Hanikrat Ner Hashem. That's called the candle of Hashem. Ha'or shel haner hu or haTorah. The or of the candle is the or of the Torah. Kemo shebiyar Ramchal, like the Ramchal explained in Da'at Funot, Chelek Bet Amud Kaftet. Shoresh HaMitzvot hi Torah. The root of the mitzvot is the Torah. Ki hi hit pashtut kol hamadregot l'tzorach habriya atzma. Because the Torah is basically the emanation of all of the levels for the need of the creation itself. Ubifrat l'tzorach briyat haneshamot. And specifically for the souls, for the creation of the souls. Mikol hit pashtut and from all of this development, basically, the, it goes out this, through this development is uh, the inyan of the mitzvot, which is according to the six hundred, the order of six hundred thirteen of the or that we re, that we mentioned previously. and therefore it says kiner mitzvah Torah or because the candle is mitzvah and the Torah is the or. Sham Harab Chaim Friedlander Zichron Livracha and there Rav Friedlander said Rav Friedlander of course has an explanation on the Dat Funot the Zets uh, and this is what he said Batora Klulim Kol Haorot Hamit Pashtim Bahadraga. In the Torah is included all of the emanations, all of the lights that are that are that are emanating in in proper levels in different steps. To give reality, to give existence to all of the creation and all of the souls. And from her come the six hundred thirteen mitzvot that are received by the six hundred thirteen aspects of the person's soul. That and the 613 aspects of the Bria, and they allow these uh, emanations to pass through and, and give Shefa. The Torah is basically the aspect of Or. That basically, that, 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 that the Or comes out and fills up the candles with the mitzvah and, and with the light. The Od Katav Shama Ramchal, and also the Ramchal wrote over there, Vines Svirot Biotam Hadraga, the Svirot, because they are in levels, Hasiba Hakrovale La Tachtonim Tia Svira Tachtona, the Cause of the Tachtonim of the lower worlds, of course, is the lowest Sfira. The Kodemetla, the one that's before it, the Siba Elea, is the cause of the one that was before. The Chen Ad En Sof Baruchu, and this all continues on up until we get to the En Sof. The Sod Chiburam Hem Shlosha Yehudim. And basically, the so the secret of the of the chiburam of the chibur of the connection between these is three different yichudim, which is yichud of yud kevavke with the name aleph he yud he. Of course, yud kevavke is the tif eret, and aleph he yud he is the keter. And then we have this other yichud over here, which is yichud of yud kevavke with elokim, which of course is the tif eret with the gvura. And then we have the last one, which is yud kevavke and of aleph dalad nun yud, which is the tif eret the yud. Kevavke with the Malchut, which is the Aleph Dalad Nun Yud. Shlosh Shemot Eye Elokim Adonai. These are the three names. Shibetocham Shem Hashem. That in the middle of them is the name Yud Kevavke. Behem Kiminyan Ner. And when you add all these up, these are equivalent to 250. Umis, which is the gematria of Ner. Umisod ze yotzot ha-mitzvot. And from this sod, from this secret, all the mitzvot come out. Shem bechinat ha-dvekut mamash. Their aspect of attachment, the true attachment. Sh'al ken sigulatam la-shim ba-adam ha-kesh ha And the sigula, the performing of the mitzvot, is this allows the person to complete his connection, of course, to the upper worlds. Kinim like we said above, nefesh, ruach, neshama, the soul, the nefesh, ruach, and the neshama, ma'ase dibu, Machshava, Maase action, Dibur speech, and Machshava is thought, which corresponds to the, each one of them. So, Nefesh 
is corresponding to the Maaseh, the Ruach is corresponding to the Dibur, and the Neshama is corresponding to the Machshava. Or we can say these three Shemot. The, this name over here with the Yud Kevavke and Aleph Dalet Nun Yud is corresponding to the Nefesh, corresponding to the Maaseh. This name over here, which is Yud Kevavke and Elohim, is corresponding to the Ruach, which is corresponding to the Dibur. And this name over here, Yud Kevavke and Aleph Hey Yud Hey, is corresponding to the Neshama, which is corresponding to the Machshava. The Harav Kola Sfirot Atzmam, and then afterwards all the other Sfirot. The Zeh Sod, and this is the secret Ner Mitzvah, Ner Candle of Mitzvah. Because these three different Yichudim, when you add up the gematria of all these letters, comes out to 250, which is the gematria of Ner. Ubiera, Rav Chaim Friedlander, and also Rav Chaim Friedlander explains Sham, Aide Taryag Hamitzvot Notzrot Beadam, Taryag Bechinot Shel Ksharim, that through the 613 mitzvot, in the person is generated the 613 aspects of Kesher, of connection, Ben Targal Chalkea Neshama El Sasvirot Al Targal Through the 613 aspects of the Neshama to the Sfirot and the 613 different types of uh, worlds in the, in the upper world. And through this, there's a Kesher between the Sfirot, and through the Sfirot to the ones who emanated the Sfirot, which of course is the Ein Sof. And through the establishment of these connections, this is how the connection happens between Adam, the person, and his creator. Also look there in more detail. Also look in Zohar Breshit in page 50a. Okay, Reshchet. Mimena hidliku ner haneshama. From her was lit the, the candle of the neshama. Bi'er harakanti. The rakanti explained in Dvarim chapter ten, verse number seventeen. The ta'am ubotidbak. What is the reason ubotidbak? This pasuk that you have to attach yourself to Hashem. There's a so, a secret, in the purity of the person's limbs. It's possible for a person to attach himself to the Shekhinah, even though the Shekhinah is called a consuming fire. Because the holy Neshama, the pure Neshama, is called Ner Hashem. It's called the candle of Hashem. And she is lit by the fire of the Shekhinah, Uba Dvoka Aluyav Uchukata. And in her is Dvuka is attached. And this is how she has the desire to attach herself to the Shekhinah. The Katab Od Ba'arichut, and he also wrote in more detail, Ari Rakanti, in Parashat Vayichi, Ukshayu Koshrim Nafsham Benefesh El Yonah, when they would attach their souls with the Nefesh El Yonah, with the exalt, with the upper Nefesh, Hayu Hadvarim Mit Rabim Umit Barachim Umit Galim Me'alehem. The different items would increase and would get bracha and would be revealed on their own. Me'afisat ha-machshava, without, without the thought, k'adam ha-potech bracha v'hi mitpashetet. Like a person opens up, potech brecha, like a person opens up a source of water and the water just keeps coming out. The kavanato shenishmat adam, and what does he mean? That the soul of the person, he kedugmat ner, is like a like a like a like a, like a candle. Shaner murkav mishemen, because and the ner, the the candle has oil, petila wick, and ash fire. The orsho chesbo, and and the light that attaches itself to the fire. Who keneged nefesh ruach neshama v'gimel olamot? This is vis a vis the three aspects of the human soul: nefesh ruach and neshama, and the three olamot, which is the olam of the asiya, the olam of the uh, of the yitzira, and the olam of the bria, like we discussed before. That the nefesh corresponds; these three aspects, the nefesh corresponds to the asiya, the ruach corresponds to the yitzira, and the neshama corresponds to the bria. Shemen keneged olam asiya. This, the oil is like the world of the Asiya, the nefesh be'adam, and the soul of the person, the nefesh of the person. Petila keneged olam yetzira, petila, which is a wick, is basically vis-a-vis the yetzira, the world of the formation. The ruach be'adam, and the, and the, the ruach, the spirit of a person, ha'esh keneged the bria, and the fire is vis-a-vis the world of the bria, and the neshama be'adam, and the soul, the neshama, and the person. The or ha'torah keneged olam 
Atzilut Hamir Bahem. And the aura of the Torah is like the world of the Atzilut that is shining in them. And through the action of the mitzvot, performing it with his nefesh, ruach, and neshama, or his maaseh, his dibur, and his machshava, maaseh, dibur, and machshava, hu miyached mekasher kol bechinot nishmato. He connects and he basically unifies all of the different aspects of his soul, el ha-shechina, to the shechina, hakdosha shiyeredef me'olam ha-atzilut, that comes from the world of the atzilut, ladiket ner Hashem nishmat adam, to light up the candle of Hashem, which is the neshama of the person, muva b'shem ha-gra, and it's also said in the name of the gra, b'ketivra v'rabinda mishklov, Al Mishnat Chasidim Dav Koftet Shemilat Nefesh that the word Nefesh Rashi Tevot Ner Petila Shemen Nefesh the Nun is Ner the Pe is the Petila and the Shin is the Shemen the Kavana Kashem Shah Petila Mamshichat Hashem and Minakli and the Kavana the meaning is that just like the Petila the wick draws the oil from the Kli from the utensil Vofecha Totola Or and change Changes it over to light. Can Adam Aidei Maaseh Mitzvot? Similarly, the person by through the performance of the mitzvot Aidei Nafsho through his soul, the gufo ba'olam hagashmi, and his body in the world, the physical world, mechabera tachtonim le'elyonim. He attaches the lower worlds to the upper worlds. The hofech otam le'or, and he allows the light to be uh, generated in that type of way. Shemati b'shem Rab Moshe Shipira. This is what the rabbi wrote. This book said. Okay, continue on page Kof Lamed Tet, above the line. Ve'amida hazot nikret lifamim sefer chayim, and this attribute, which of course is the attribute of the Malchut, is called sefer chayim, the book of life. Ve'atam lefi shehu ha'otzar shebonim shachim achayim mechayim elyonim hanikrim chayim olam haba, and the reason why it's called sefer chayim is because this is the storage, the treasure house that fr- that to it is drawn the life from the Chaim El Yonim, from the up from the life from the upper worlds, Hanikraim Chaye Olam Abba, that's called Chaye Olam Abba, which of course is Divina, Aide El Chai, through the through the Sphira of El of through the Midah of El Chai, which is the Sphira of the Yesod. Vehu, next page, Kof Mem, Kidimyon Sefer Shabo Kotvim. And this is like the Dimyon, like the imagery of a book that is that people are writing in, an empty book that people write in. Similarly, in this midah, which is the midah of the Malchut, all of the all the tzurot, all of the images are drawn in their details. Im next page kof mem aleph lemavet im lechayim whether to life or whether to whether to death or whether to life kidichtiv as it's written ani amit vachaye ani which is the midah of the Malchut amit I will slaughter and I will give life in Dvarim chapter thirty two verse number thirty nine. Uchtiv, and it's also written, Kola Katuv Lachaim Biyushalayim. All of that, all that's written, for, all that's written for life in Yerushalayim. Yeshaya chapter four, verse number four. Sharei Gam Hinikret Yerushalayim, and also this midah is called Yerushalayim, Al Midah Yedua, because of the known attribute. Ubeezrat Hashem b'Midat El Chai, and Beezrat Hashem with Midah of El Chai, which is the Yisod, which we're going to discuss in Shar Bet. Nefaresh Kol Hadvarim Al Seder Hakavana Perush Mevoar. All these items will be explained, and all the understanding will be there in a, in a, in a clarified fashion. Okay, now we're going to go below the line. Go back to well, now. We're going to go back to page Kof Lametet. I want to go below the line. Resh Tet Sefer Achaim, the Book of Life. Of course, this would be very apropos to the high holidays. Katab Sefer Pades Rimonim was written in the book Pades Rimonim of the Ramak, Shar Kaf Gimel Perak Tet Vav. Shesefer Achaim Hu Abina, that the book of life is the Sfira of the Bina. V'zela Shano Sham, and this is his language there. Uperesh Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai explained Alav Hashalom Betikunim in the Tikunim of the Zohar, Tikuna Yud Chet Daf Lamed Aleph Amud Aleph. Ki Tzadik Mitzad Abina Nikra Sefer Chaim, the Tzadik. For vis-a-vis, the sphere of the Bina is called Sefer Chaim, Uperusho, and the explanation, Ki Abina hi mashpat ha-chaim ha-nishpaim la-mechokma milamala. Because the Bina, she is what draws the Chaim, 
which is coming from the Sfira of the Chokhmah, which is above the Bina, which is above her, Mi Mekor HaChaim, for the source of the Chaim. So the source of the Chaim, Mekor HaChaim, of course, is going to be the Chokhmah, which then is, of course, the Keter. V'lachen HaTzadik BeKabalato HaChaim Me'abina Nikra Sefer Chaim. And therefore, when the Tzadik is receiving Chaim from the Bina, he is called Sefer HaChaim. He is called the Book of Life. L'ficha Katav Rabbeinu. And that's why our Rabbi wrote in Sefer Sharet Tzedek, which is also written by Rabbi Gikatilia Shar Aleph, Shamachut Nikret Sefer Chaim, that the Malchut is called Sefer Chaim. Why? The Fishim Kabelat Chaim in a Tzadik Hu Yasod, because the Malchut receives the Chaim from the Tzadik, which is the Yasod, which is the Sfira right above the Malchut, Vizel Shano, and this is his language, Vinikret Sefer Chaim, and she's called Sefer Chaim, Ki a Chaim Baim the Midat Malchut Aidea Tzadik, because the life comes to the aspect of the Malchut, to the Sphere of the Malchut, by which the tzaddik, which is the yisob, the kavanato, and his understand his exp- his uh, meaning there is shamalchut moshechet et hachayim in abina that the malchut draws life from the bina hamashpia el yisod and the, because the bina influences the yisod hanikra el chai and the yisod is called el chai we'll learn about that in the second shar in share ora. Uma sheni kraim sefer chaim and what's called sefer chaim ki a sefer bektivato megalet olam ha'machshava shel hakotev. What is a sefer? A book. What is a sefer? A sefer is something that allows the thoughts of the author of the book to be revealed physically, to be revealed in this world. That's the purpose of a sefer. Habina megalet hachaim in hachokma. The bina is revealing the chaim, the light from the sphere of the chokma. The yasod the malchut. And the Sfirah of the Yesod and the Sfirah of the Malchut reveal and bring the life from above, which is from the Chokmah and the, and the Bina, Ha'elyonim, Lidem Mitziyut Vahavaya, to reality. Because, of course, the first three Sfirot, Keter, Chokmah, Bina, is potential. It's only potential. And then the next seven Sfirot is the actualization of that potential. Okay, Resh Yud, the hook dimyon sefer shebo kotvim, and this is like the imagery of a book that person writes in. Ita besefer yitzira, it's written in the sefer yitzira, perak aleph mishnah aleph in the beginning. Shakadosh baruch hu barat alom olamo bishlosha svarim, that God created His world with three books: the sefer, the sefar, and sipur. Ubiyesh shama gra Hashem, and the gra explained over there in Sefer Yetzira. What are these three things? Shem chokma bina vedat chokma, which is the second sfira. The bina, actually, in this, in this it would be the first sfira. Then the bina would be the second sfira, and the dat would be the third sfira. Shibahem nivra olam ki yadua, and through them the world was created. Ubiyesh sham pri yitzchak. Sefer hu ha Sefer, the book, is called the Chochma. Ki kmo she besefer nishama kol, just like in the Sefer, just like in the book, everything is written. Kmo ken be Chochma nishimu halam et bet netivot. In the Sefirah of the Chochma is, is basically written the 32 paths. Ubina hu ha sofer, and the Bina is the sofer, is the author. She kmo she sofer hu ha mevaer ha mozi laor talumot ha Sefer. And similarly, the sofer, the the, the the writer is the one who who clear who clarifies and brings to light what's hidden in the sefer. Kach bina hotzialef well netivota chokma. Similarly, the 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 um the bina brings into action netivot the pathways of the chokma liyot nechakim ba leakir lakol to be established in her and to be recognizable to all. Or specifically, this, maybe they mean the Malchut here. The Sipur Bedat Shehu Shoresh Vav, and the Sipur is the Shoresh of Dat, which is in the, the Sipur is in the Dat, which is the Shoresh of the letter Vav, which corresponds, of course, to the Tiferet. Ketzavot Shebahema Sipur Mutar. And this is the concept of the six different directions where a person is telling the story, and this is mutar. Upiresh besefer Pardes Rimonim, and explain the Ramak in book Pardes Rimonim, Shar Yudbet Perak Rishon, Shachokma Nikret Sefer, that the Chokma is called Sefer, Mitam Shibokol and Neet Salim and Ibrahim Nichlalim Bedakut Chokma, because it's called a Sefer. Why? Because in it, in the Chokma, all of the emanations, all of the creations, are basically included in in the in the in the chokhmah. 
the Sod Lamed Bet Netivot, in the Sod of 32 pathways. Shebehem Nivru Venechuku Kola Dvarim Gidolim. Through those pathways, everything has been established and, and, and carved out in all these different items. Uktanim, Gdolim and Ktanim, big items and small items. Shemimena Lulmata, that's above her, uh, that from her and, from, and below her. Velachen Nikras Sefer, Shisham Kola Dvarim Kituvim Misudurim Kasefer. Because why is it called a Sefer? Because everything there is in proper order, like you see in a book, that there's index and there's different order, each chapter comes in a proper order. The Sefer Asheni, in the second, Sefer, which is the which is the Sofer, who Bina, this is Bina, Shabbat Dvarim Nifratim Umit Galim, that through the Bina everything is Nifrat, becomes in detail, becomes uh, uh, in, in the details and is revealed. Shekol Advarim Shehem Bechokmat Bedakut, everything that is in the Chokmah, but that is in very sublime in the Chokmah, Yotzim Lefoal, comes out into action, Umit Galim Ayyadeh Bina, is revealed by way of the Bina, Kmoha Nekeva Motzia Lepoel Mashe Bekoach Hazachar, just like the feminine brings into action what is in the power, the strength of the male. The Sipur Huadat, and the storyline itself is the Dat, Shu Shorash HaTiferet, this is the Shorash, the root of the Tiferet, Shisham Galim HaDvarim HaNisparim HaSefer VeHasofer, that there it's revealed in that book the different items that are told that in the Sefer and by the Sofer, Ki HaSipur Hu HaDavar HaPa'ul, because the Sipur is the actual item that's actions sofer by way of the sofer by way of the uh, by way of the uh, the author acherim, which means it goes into action for others to be able to appreciate them ashesh ketzavot and these are the six different uh, directions of course the six firot them hashisheshet yimei breshit and this is the six days of creation velachen sfirat malchut therefore the sfirat of the malchut nikret ima the ima tata'a it's called the lower mother the he said Sefer Kamoha Bina, and this is also a Sefer, uh, I'm sorry, Sofer like the Bina. Shemitzayeretet Orota Sfirot, that she draws up the lights of the Sfirot, Ha'el Yonot, that are exalted, Bitsirim Shonim, with different types of imagery, La'ir La'olamot Ha'tachtonim, to give over to the lower worlds. And this is precisely how prophecy happens, that the prophet is able to see through the Aspaklaria Shalom Me'irav, for all the other prophets, or the Aspaklaria Me'irav Moshe Rabbeinu, to see through that into the imagery that's being there before, of course, that is all spiritual. Okay. Let's do one more. Resh Yud Aleph. Hamidah hazot ba mitztayirin kol hatsurot. And this midah, this is what's drawn up all of the different images. Ha'olamot nishtal shilu v'yardu derech hishtal shilut v'dargot atzumot. The worlds were basically developed and they came down by way of development in different stages, specifically minit avu v'nit ma'atu mikdushatam. And they became thickened and they became lessened in their holiness. Ad she'bazeh ha'olam na'asu chol. Until it comes down to this world where they become mundane. They said that and the order of the development of the world and their coming down from world to world that every world is dressed up in the it dresses up the world that is below it that is lower than it it's a I'm sorry every world that every lower world is dressing over the higher world. Continuing on, like the soul is dressed up in the body. Like it's explained in the Zohar, Breshit, Kaf Amud Aleph, Beidra Zota, Resh Sadi Aleph Amud Bet, Shechitzoniot Shel Kol Partsuf, that the outer aspect of every Partsuf Ba'olam in the world, Mit Pashet Mit Labesh Betzaf, Partsuf Shiba'olam Shitaftav is dressed up in the Partsuf of the world that is below it, Venaselo Pnimiut Veneshama, and becomes for it Pnimiut, which means the external part is the lower world and the Pnimiut is the higher world. Velachem Bechol Olam Mitzayev and Echtam Bokol Sidre Olam Shemealav. And that's why in each world is drawn and signed in it all the order of the world that is above it because it's contained as a, as a, it's a Levush. 
for everything that's uh, that's above it. Just like the body is revealing all of the forces, all of the powers of the neshama. Uchdita b'midrash, like explained in midrash in Shmot Parasha Lamed Gimel Ot Dalid v'yichuli truma. What does it mean? Take for me truma. Ribi brachia patach v'ama. Ribi brachia opened up and said, Kichol b'shamayim va'aretz. Everything is in the shamayim and the aretz. Atam otze kol ma shebara kadosh baruch hu lamala bara lamata. You see that everything God created above, He created below, which means each world, lower world, is a reflection of the upper world. V'zeh l'shon anefesh hachaim, and this is the Words of the Nefesh Chaim, Rav Chaim Velojin, Shar Dalit, Perak Kav Zayin, Ki El Yonim Ashik Dushatam Raba Meod, that the upper worlds, even there, the holiness is very, very much. Omnam Kasher Nishtal Shuluv Yadu Derek Nishtal Shuluv Yadar Got Atzumot. When they came down and and came down through development to the and different levels to the lower worlds, Hagam Shi Bechol Olam Nitzayer Benechtam Bo Kol Sidra Olam Shi Malav. Even though in each lower world is is basically drawn up all of the aspects. Of the world that's above it, bidmuto kitzamo mamash kiadua in its imagery and its form exactly. Of course, we're talking spiritually. Kumosh kata bazoa, like it's written in the Zohar, parasha yitro daf pe daf pe bet amud bet tagum. Lamanu keen she yesh lamala ken yesh lamata mehen. We learn that just like. There is in the above worlds, there is in the below worlds, which means the lower worlds reflect what's going on in the higher worlds. And in all the worlds, each one is attaching to the other one, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And the Malchut is, 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 is the end of all of the Malot, all of the levels. And in the Malchut is, is basically imagery of all of the worlds of the Tachtonim. B'mashal shel tziur k'tiva b'sefer, similar in the mashal that of the writing that's inside a book. Okay, we'll stop here. Baruch Adonai le'olam. Amen. Ve'amen.